I love convenience and efficiency. Seriously, I do. I love the way in which technologies have enabled and made those mundane things of life just simpler and easy for us to do. You know, I love the fact that I don't have to take a giant wash tub and go out in the backyard and then take my clothes and scrub them one by hand when I want to clean them. I love the fact that I can put my dishes into this square thing, press a button, and then a couple hours later open the door and they're clean. I love the fact that I can go online and Google something that I have no idea what the answer to is and have it within seconds. Convenience, efficiency are sometimes wonderful things for us and enable us to do more. But what I don't think we often think too much about is just the way that those things of convenience shape and form us, perhaps not in the better. Welcome back to the idols of today where we're exploring the different idols that we have that we might not think about too often. Last week we talked all about the idol of comfort and today we are talking about the idol of convenience. Convenience, you know, that ability that you can just have what you want, when you want it, that it's easy, to, there's not a lot of decisions to make, all of those sort of things. We'll see a little bit later how God calls us to much more than that. So how does convenience affect us? Well, let's use a few non-sort of biblical examples, and then we'll talk about that. So when you're shopping on Amazon, you're either one of two people. In my mind, either you're the person who types in what you want, you see the first one on the list, and you click good. Or you're the person who does hours and hours and hours of research. Or you're the person who goes to the Amazon top 10 list and buys the one that's the highest up on the list. They've done all the reviews for you. They've ranked it all the way for you. All you got to do is just click buy. And then it gets even better, right? Once you've done all that research, once you've done all of that input, how fast does it get to your house? Well, some places in a day, some places less, and most places, though, two days. That you could buy something in basically almost all over the world, it can get to you in two days. And if it doesn't take two days, well, you can message Amazon and say, hey, where's my stuff? We live in a world that is so connected, that is so interconnected, that we're used to having this sort of level of convenience. Another example for you, when you go to the store, when you go to Amazon, when you go to Walmart, there's pretty much everything that you could ever need there. All you gotta do is pick it up, Take it to the checkout counter, scan it, put your credit card into there, take the cash out of your pocket, and walk out the door. But we don't have to think at all about the people that made that item, where it came from, who was behind it, whether they were forced to make that thing, what they were being paid. We don't have to think about that. We're totally disconnected from those sorts of questions. Instead, we just get to pick it up, pay for it, and leave. And all these sort of conveniences disconnect us a little bit. They disconnect us from things that you and I sometimes need to think about and need to wrestle with. So a good example of this, if I'm not looking for, if I don't know what a Bible verse is, if I say, hey, Paul talks about this thing, but I can't really remember where, well, what do I do? I either pull out my phone, I ask the person on my phone whose name starts with an S, and then she tells me what it is, or she'll tell me, hey, I can open these up on your phone. But what, what I get lost, what gets lost in that is the fact that then I don't really have to remember. I don't really have to internalize that information because I know that it's retrievable, right? I know that I can use my phone. I know that I can do that. But then what do I lose out on that? Well, I lose out on inwardly digesting this thing, of taking the words of the scriptures to heart, of truly letting them sink into my body and soul. And so in that way, convenience disconnects us from God's word, even. Another way I think convenience is an idol for us in the way it shapes us, if everything in life is truly instant gratification, you know, you can 
post something and immediately you get feedback, you get likes, you get comments, you get hearts, all that stuff. Or you can go to the store, you can even do grocery pickup for the same day. You don't even have to go inside. All of those things shape and form us to desire things sooner, faster, and with much less waiting. But I don't have to be the one to tell you that our God doesn't act in that way, right? That our God isn't one who is there at our beck and call to just do what we want in our timing when we want it. That sometimes our prayers go unanswered for years. Sometimes God says not yet. Sometimes God says no. And there's no button, there's no customer service that you can go and instantly get what you want from him in that way. And so sometimes our convenience leads us to trust not in God's timing and his provision, but in what we think is best right now, here, in this moment, currently. The scripture I want to point us to comes from Romans 12. The first two verses, Therefore I exert you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, alive, holy, and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and approve or discern what is the will of God, what is good and well-pleasing and perfect. What he describes takes time to truly be transformed, to truly discern or test, to see what is and where God is leading is not an instant gratification. Even Paul's words about suffering, producing endurance, endurance, character, and character, hope, that doesn't happen overnight. It isn't a one to a hundred sort of thing. All of these take time, years even. For those of you who've lost loved ones, family members, friends, you know that grief isn't instantly gone, but that it takes time. And that that time isn't even for it to go away, but instead for you to just learn how to live with it. And so this idol of convenience leads us sometimes to misbelieve and to get disconnected from how God works in our lives too. And so we become impatient with him. We become angry with him that he's not doing what we want when we want. But God's promises to you are still sure and certain that he is always with you, that he is always at work, and that there will be a day when he will return. And so as you think about this, I invite you to take a moment and stop yourself and ask, what are the ways in which I lean into this convenience thing a lot? And how is that shaping and forming me perhaps in a negative way? And then second, what are some inconvenient things that you could do that might actually encourage you to live differently? Here's one that I try and do. I do my best to go the speed limit. It is inconvenient for me to do that. It takes away from my time. I feel like I'm holding people up. I want to get places faster. But why do I do it? Because I can know that I'm going the speed limit and it forces me to slow down. It forces me to be content with when I get somewhere and that that is all that I can do. That those little extra two minutes, they really probably don't matter that much. And so it helps me then trust too that God is there, that he's going to give me what I need and he's going to get me where I need to be to in whatever time that it takes. It's a certain level of surrender, if you will, in that. Let me pray for you as we explore, as you seek to think about the idol of convenience, the trap that it is for you and I in our lives of faith. Lord Jesus, in this modern day, you have given us so many wonderful gifts of technology and tools to use that help make our lives easier. But help us, Lord, to see the ways that they might be shaping and might be changing us, not in a positive way, but instead disconnecting us from you and from your word. 
Help us to see those things. Help us to confess them to you. And help us to instead lean into you, to trust you, to maybe even do inconvenient things for the sake of growing in our faith with you. Jesus, we know that you promise us you will always be at work, that you will always be present. And so we trust that you hear our prayers and that you will answer us in your time and in your way. And so we pray in your perfect, your holy name. Amen. Make sure you like this video, subscribe as well. It helps other people find it. We'll see you next time.